There are agencies across the Northland that take care of our most vulnerable, but many are at a breaking point. They need more staff. Tonight, we're talking about some possible solutions. With access to child care in such high demand, good news tonight for parents on the Iron Range. We'll tell you what's in the works. And the DFL-controlled legislature is moving the party's legislative priorities through the session early. We dive into two of them tonight, legalizing marijuana and sports betting. This is WDIO News at 10. Good evening, I'm Darren Danielson. Thanks for joining us on this Friday night. Well, it looks like we are going to be holding on to these mild temperatures for a few more days. Should make for a pretty good weekend, actually. We start out tonight with a first look at our weather with meteorologist Sabrina Ullman. And for Justin tonight. It is going to be such a nice week. This is, I think, our third weekend in a yeah. row, despite having some messy weather during the week when yeah. Justin's here. So, you know, I'll, I'll just take credit. Duly nice noted. Weekend Duly ahead. noted. Yeah, and we're looking at the radar right now and plenty of clouds, but not a raindrop or flurry in sight. Even zooming out further, we're not really seeing a whole lot of anything going on, and that will continue throughout the week. And now we could see a few flurries develop, especially towards the northern portion of Minnesota tonight and tomorrow, but we're not expecting any accumulation with that. So nice weekend ahead right now. As the Ben Ford Jeep Ram Harbor Cam shows, 23 degrees by the lake. And tonight, we'll cool off a few degrees. 16 degrees for the Twin Ports area. A lot of us in the teens to low 20s. Again, those p possibilities of flurries this evening and for tomorrow. But temperatures still mild. Most of us in the 20s. Grand Marais warming up to 31 degrees for our Saturday. And then we get to see this continue into Sunday with a lot of us still holding on to the 20s. 25 for the Twin Ports, mostly cloudy skies, but sometime this week we could see the sun start to peak. However, this time next week we will be at least 10 degrees cooler as we're in for a little bit more January-like weather than what we've been seeing, Darren. All right, we'll talk to you some more about those details in a bit, Sabrina. Thank you. Well, we've been reporting on the top issues, getting a lot of attention this legislative session so far. Two of them are recreational marijuana and sports betting. In the House, the same representative is the author of both of those bills. That is Zach Stevenson. WDIO's Tom Hauser sat down with him to hear his plans. Minnesotans deserve the freedom and respect to make responsible decisions about cannabis. Whether it's recreational marijuana or cannabis. The fact that we don't have legal sports betting in Minnesota doesn't mean that we don't have sports betting in Minnesota. Sports betting. The forecast doesn't appropriate any dollars. Or accounting for inflation in budget forecasts. Representative Zach Stevenson seems to be everywhere. That's because the Democrat from Coon Rapids, who chairs the House Commerce Committee, is the author of consumer legislation impacting so many Minnesotans. Dating back to legislation expanding growler sales at microbreweries last year. That has been a big win for Minnesotans. Stevenson says from New Ulm to Duluth and beyond, brew pubs are selling many more of their products on site. And this year, he thinks recreational marijuana will be the next big bill to pass. Minnesotans are ready, and I would say there's bipartisan support for this. I hear from uh, Republican members on a pretty regular basis uh, with interest in it, uh, indicating to me they'd like to find a way to get to support. Although he says there is some bipartisan support, Stevenson says he's also cognizant of opposition from law enforcement, safety groups, and many parents worried about young people having greater access to marijuana. Those are important issues. We want to make sure we have safe roads. We want to make sure we keep uh, these substances out of the hands of very young children, for example. And so we're developing policies in the bill to accomplish those goals. We're learning from both the successes and the mistakes that have been made in other states. As for sports betting, no hearing yet this session, but he's confident it will pass at least the House this year. I'm optimistic that we'll pass sports betting uh, this year. We're a little earlier in the process in that than we are with cannabis. We're still developing, refining the language from uh, last year. But I think we'll, uh, we'll get there. Tom Hauser, WDIO News. And you can see more Minnesota political coverage on At Issue with Tom Hauser. That's at 9 a.m. Sundays right here on WDIO. Well, having more access to child care could help ease the workforce strain for almost every field, including direct service professionals and those who care for people with disabilities. But that particular industry is at a breaking point. 
and newly elected state representative Natalie Zelesnikar wants to help coordinate solutions. Renee Pasal reports. Desperation in the disability services industry. We are surviving on the backs of some of the best, most caring people in our community. The folks that will stay those extra shifts, who know how important it is to help people live in the community. Leaders say they just can't get enough people to provide the care. For Duluth Regional Care Center, or DRCC, that meant closing a few programs. Filling shifts is so hard. I think what it is is that we have to work 24 hours a day. We have to provide those that level of service, and many of our, our services are 24-hour-a-day services. And I think people just can't imagine working a variety of shifts. Friday, representatives and staff shared more of their problems with newly elected representative Natalie Zelesnikar. But safeguards have to be realistic. She has a background in nursing home administration. Now as a lawmaker, she's hearing concerns about the backlog of hospital beds, and that's due to staffing at nursing homes and group homes. They're very frustrated because it's long waits in the emergency room. It's hard to find a bed if you're in the nursing home or you're in the hospital and you're a senior or you are a person who has disabilities and needs to be placed, can't go home. A boost in wages would help and not just a one-time bonus. Right now the state funds them at about 16 bucks an hour. There may need to be a change with more technology in the future. Still, the present requires a presence and a caring one. But we need to be able to build capacity so we can truly provide meaningful lives and have the individuals we support live their best life. Mm -hmm. So Lesnikar told us that she is committed to getting support for disability services, seniors and kids this legislative session. Well, parents on the Iron Range will be happy to hear about two new child care facilities in Ely and Chisholm. $1.2 million in federal funding is coming to support the projects. Senator Tina Smith visited the United Way of Northeastern Minnesota this morning and attended a roundtable discussion with local leaders, too. The goal is to come up with ways to expand child care access throughout the entire Iron Range region. Rural communities, small towns and rural places often have a really difficult time tapping into federal resources. You don't have huge grant departments. These earmarks are so powerful, especially for small towns and rural places. Yeah, the United Way said that the plans to break ground when the snow is gone. Smith also visited with folks about the East Misabi Water Project today as well. First Witness Child Advocacy Center says they want to help organizations in Lake County. For free, you can go through the Safe and Strong Communities training. This helps adults learn how to recognize, respond, and report child abuse. The training can be done in person or virtually. Contact First Witness if you happen to be interested. Well, the renovations are complete, and the historic St. Louis County Jail Building has been converted to apartments. We'll take you inside for today's grand opening. And the Duluth Arts Community is celebrating. For the first time since the pandemic closed its doors, the Zeitgeist Theater Company is back. And we are back in one minute. Welcome back. The wait is finally over. The historic St. Louis County Jail has been transformed into new apartments, and they're now ready for residents. The Leona Apartments feature units ranging from studios to two bedrooms. Some of the apartments even have the same bars from the original jail cells. They held an open house this evening so people could come in and check out all those renovations and highlight the efforts being made to solve the housing issue in Duluth. We also see in stark relief how the opportunities and challenges before us in housing and other areas of community life can best be addressed and in some cases can only be addressed with approaches that bring together what the public and the private sectors each do. And this project truly is an emblem of that kind of collaboration. I'm really proud of that. And uh, thank you for each of you who've been part of making that a reality. Yeah, to see the floor layouts and even apply for one of these units, if you're interested, you can go online to the live Leona website. While many of us have already undecked the halls, others are still celebrating the holiday season. Yeah, Rubber Chicken Theater is donning all their gay apparel down at the Great Lakes Aquarium for their Christmas Aquarium in January show. <laughs> Starting tonight, the group will be putting on their sketch comedy show surrounded by everyone's favorite festive fish. 
One of the members of the show told us that some of their sketches were even based off of some of the residents of the aquarium. Take a listen. <laughs> the festivities will continue tomorrow night, too, by the way, as well as Friday and Saturday next weekend. If you want tickets before they sell out, we have a link at WDIO.com. You know, WDIO has celebrated and collaborated with Rubber Chicken Theater before, and <laughs> that group is a lot of fun to hang around with. But outdoors is probably where a lot of people are going to be hanging out this weekend. Oh, definitely. This weekend is yeah. yet another weekend where you want to get outside yeah. and enjoy this wonderful weather. However, by this time next week, we're going to see some cooler temperatures. I'll have more in just a couple of minutes. Well, tonight is a really big night. Zeitgeist Theater Company is back for the first time since the beginning of the pandemic. And they're ready to bring you their latest show, The Boys Room. Our Kenny Johnson was over there to bring us the inside scoop. It's been a minute since we've had our own shows produced here. A big return for one Duluth Theater Company. We're really excited to welcome back our community and our audiences that love seeing uh, shows on the stage. Although the theater space in the zeitgeist didn't go away during the pandemic, the company was hit hard. As a nonprofit arts organization trying to live through a pandemic, it's been sort of a, a struggle thinking about when are we going to bring back theater, our own produced theater? When are, you know, how do we find the funding for that? How do we find the right people involved? Zeitgeist Theater was able to regroup and got to work on the small play, The Boys Room. It reminded us of home. It reminded us of, uh, us of this big dysfunctional family. The actors of the show really excited for audiences to see the final product and for the big return. When you sit in the audience, you really feel like you're part of the story. You feel like you're just sitting in your living room just, just watching this unfold. You can kind of feel the audience with you. In a bigger venue, sometimes you don't feel that, but this is a really intimate space. So they're kind of with you for the ride. Zeitgeist Theater set to offer diverse theater going experiences in a town that's full of artistry. Zeitgeist is going to be taking on a little bit of a different role in theater than how we're used to. What we're doing in 2023 is taking on sort of our own productions with our own label to sort of do more, a little bit more new work, a little bit more relevant theater in what um, the time is now. I think that having these smaller shows is important. You can see new different sides. You can enjoy theater from a different perspective, and I think that's really important. For WDIO News, I'm Kenny Johnson. Oh, that does sound like a kind of a new element to the art scene. We have a link to buy tickets on our website if you're interested. Hey, the boys basketball at Superior High School hosted a box out cancer event tonight. It's to raise money for St. Luke's Foundation to help women in the Northland with breast cancer research, education and support for current warriors battling breast cancer. Breast cancer is a, a big thing for for me. My mom's a survivor of it, luckily. Um, so it's just something we started doing. Um, a couple of the boys wanted to do it as a senior project from the basketball team. So uh, we got it rolling. The girls do one and, and now the boys are doing one too. It feels amazing. It's, just, it's a great feeling that at the end of the day you can just, you know, come together as a whole as a community and just, you know, just help in any way that you can. There was a bake sale, raffles, T-shirt sales, even a silent auction. The auction consisted of some pretty cool items donated from various local businesses, including an autographed football by the Green Bay Packers and a Minnesota Vikings mini helmet autographed by C.J. Ham. Over $3,000 was raised tonight, not counting the mail-in donations. By the way, the Spartans won 76 to 48 over Cloquet at tonight's game. And Sabrina, you covered that for us tonight. It looks like a pretty good turnout. Definitely. There were a lot of people that came out to support not only the team, but also the cause. Great. And Silent Auction had a bunch of really cool items there. Excellent. They were donated by local businesses. Congrats, everybody. It was great. Yep. And our weather is also pretty great. Looking <laughs> at some dry skies for the time being. and. I don't even have a future radar graphic to throw in here because we're just hanging out with this dry weather for the next couple of days. I mean, we could see some flurries tonight into tomorrow, especially towards the Iron Range and further north, but we're not expecting accumulation. And this entire weekend will be like that, nice and dry. So we're just going to talk about temperatures for a moment. Looking at our highs today, we've been in the 20s pretty comfortably for the most part. 30 degrees in Moose Lake, 19 Grand Marais, vast majority of us in 
the 20s and we've been above normal for the entire month of January with the exception of one day. So we had that really, really cold stretch the, in the middle towards the end of December with temperatures 27 degrees below normal for a couple of days there. But since then, we've been above normal pretty nicely. We just had that one day on the 13th that was a little bit cooler, but We've been a little bit spoiled this January, if I do say so myself, and even our low temperatures have also been not as cold as normal. So in December, we had 14 days that had low temperatures above 10 degrees. So far this January, we've had 15 days above 10 degrees. And 17 in all of December, below 10, four in all, so far in January, below 10. And below zero, 12 days in the month of January, zero days so far in January, so or in December than January. So we've been seeing temperatures that are significantly better than they usually are this time of year. We even had five days in December that were below negative 10, zero so far for our January. So it's been really nice, but it can't be nice for too long, right? So current temperatures in the teens to low 20s not bad at all and tonight we'll continue to see these mild temperatures right now it's been for jeep ram harbor cam 21 degrees feels like eight degrees and going on tonight we'll continue to have a little bit of a northwest breeze temperatures not dropping too awfully much overnight lows looking like the teens a couple of spots only cooling off to about 20 degrees and so we'll also see that wind shift from the north west to the west and so we'll see it be less of a wind chill effect too so pretty mild night mostly cloudy could see a few flurries sneak in with no accumulation expected same thing for tomorrow temperatures in the 20s 26 in solon springs 28 degrees in superior mostly cloudy but we're staying dry at least grand marais even warming up to 31 degrees so our saturday nice and warm temperatures in the 20s Sunday, we're looking at another mild day with temperatures still slightly cooler than Saturday, but we're still hanging out in the 20s. It's still really nice for January. It's not until around this time next week that we'll see those temperatures start to drop. So tomorrow, a little bit of flurries, not expecting accumulation with that. Monday, we do have a small chance of snowfall that we're keeping an eye on, but it's, not, it's nothing to really be writing home about for the time being. And then looking at Thursday, starting Wednesday night into Thursday, we'll start to see those temperatures drop. So by Friday, we are looking at temperatures dropping to the teens. A few spots will even drop to the single digits with overnight low of zero Thursday night. So we're actually going to start to see those temperatures become more normal for January. Low temperatures, normal this time of year, two degrees. We're not reaching that until Thursday and Friday, really. So We've been pretty warm for this time of year, but it's going to get cooler. Looking at our 8 to 10 day, or 8 to 14 day outlook, excuse me, we are looking at temperatures becoming below to well below. So we've been pretty spoiled for our January, but we are going to see those temperatures go to normal and then a little bit lower. But in my opinion, mm -hmm. it's actually a good thing with the timing because if we're seeing these cooler temperatures continue into next weekend, yep. there are going to be better conditions for Bear Grease, which starts a All week right. from Sunday. Right. It's coming up. And you've got a story airing, what is it, Friday at 5? Yeah, about? Friday at 5 that is about the weather conditions and what we want for Bear Grease. Kind and of so, a meteorological look yeah, at the Bear Grease. Yeah. Looking forward to that Friday. Well, yeah, we definitely will be. Serena, right. and coming up in sports, who would have thought? But on this Friday, we have a ton of hockey action to get to as the UMD men's hockey team took on North Dakota. Plus, we head to Hermantown where the boys squad took on Moorhead for the first ever time. You're watching WDIO Sports with Dylan Morello. Welcome back. The Moorhead Spuds and Hermantown Hawks are two of Minnesota's most storied boys hockey programs. And tonight, for the first time in high school history, they faced off against one another. Once beaten Hermantown, still undefeated at home, welcoming eight and seven Spuds. Spuds with a quick early breakaway here to start the game, but Dane Calloway puts it aside there. Hermantown now putting the puck on net. It's swatted at by Weston Bowman, but stays just out. Hawks down one to nothing in the second, but then Dallas Vio scores a beauty as Hermantown won this game three to two. 
To the college rinks, UMD men's hockey head coach Scott Sandlin returning to his alma mater as the Bulldogs battle North Dakota. North Dakota with the second power play in the nation, and they strike first on it on just the third shot. To the second now, UMD down two, but it's Kyle Bettens that buries this huge rebound to cut the lead in half. It's now 3-1 to one in the third period, but Bettens again with the hot hand makes it a 3-2 to two game. UMD, however, falls 4-2-2. Two, two. The number six Bulldog women are heading to St. Thomas for Saturday's Sunday series. They enter into the weekend boasting a seven game unbeaten streak, which includes an eight to one win and a one to one tie against these same Tommies. Since they joined the WCHA last season, UMD has an overall 5 0 and 1 record over St. Thomas, outscoring them 29 to 4. I think we're very alert. We're playing with urgency and you know, uh, in the second half, you're just a little closer to that ultimate goal. So the the motivation to, to stay at that high pace is there. Coming back on the second half, like we've been on fire and I think it's going to continue, especially now that we have St. Thomas after playing two big weekends. We're just going to keep on running with it. Puck drop tomorrow is set for 6 p.m. at the St. Thomas Ice Arena and Sunday's game at 2 p.m. 2 p.m. will be featured on Bally Sports North. Senior night for the CSS women opening a home and home series with St. Olaf. Pick it up in the first. A nice little flip to herself in goal by Jessica Wernilly makes it 1-0. Oles, a few minutes later, the Saints, though, they're going to throw this one on front. And Hanley Block tickles the twine, making the score 1-1. CSS still applying the pressure after that, feeding it into the middle, and Abby Polkamp all alone, but that doesn't work as CSS falls in this one by the final of 4-2-2. Their only two losses have come on the road, and tonight Esco Boys Basketball returns home to protect their house and restart their win streak. 8-2 Eskimos ranked 10th in Class 2A, hosting Moose Lake Willow River on a two-game hot streak. Getting things started, it's Eskimos McCoy Parrish with the dish to Braylon Mail for the dunk with some added hang time. Rebels Nolan Nelson splits two defenders for the bucket here. Then it's Esco's Carter Zizulka with some magic of his own with the floater and scores. It's 11-3 Eskimos. Rebels Luke Dewey with the layup for two here. And then Jacob Randa from the corner, and it's good. Esco wins 89-59. to In Superior, UWS men's basketball hunting for their seventh straight win, hosting Northwestern Yellow Jackets. Javon Walker thinking about where to take this shot. He finds a spot and gets the bucket. Eagles then, Seth Fuka with the top of the key, and it's good for the three. It's going to be 14 to 13, Yellow Jackets trail. A few possessions later, Eagles' Ryan Schneider passes it to Caleb Holden, and he sinks the jumper. Walker again, and this time he drains his 0-3, own three. UWS wins 57 to 54. Both the UMD men and women's basketball teams trekked out to Sioux Falls today. The 13th ranked Bulldog women won their 11th game in a row by the final of 66 to 40. While for the men's squad, they got back in the win column today with a 68 to 53 win. So Tough. 11 wins in a row for the UMD Ooh. women. Uh, it's a team to be looking out for everybody else. Sioux Falls is a long way to go, but yeah. you come back with two W's, that ain't bad. No, not bad at all. We'll be right back. Well, we've been pretty lucky with our weekend weather lately. We have. It's yeah. been super nice. And like it. we're still looking at some mild temperatures throughout the weekend. And we could see a few flurries sneak in, but not looking at accumulation. Temperatures mostly in the upper 20s, with a few spots even reaching the low 30s towards Cook County. Sunday, slightly cooler, but still nicely in the 20s. Wow. So no complaints from the weather department, that's for sure. <laughs> plenty, uh, plenty of things to do outdoors because yeah. we got plenty of snow to do it and we got good temperatures to do it. But if you happen to be interested in doing something indoors tomorrow, there's another Saturday morning at the races that gives your kids a chance to get their run on. UMD is the place that this one is going to be held. Registration starts at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. And then the races actually get going at 10 a.m. The youngest runners go first, all the way up to age 14. And it's free. It's totally free. So bring the whole family down to UMD for Saturday morning at the races. Oh, yeah. Good to see it. Indoors or outdoors. you got plenty of plenty, plenty to of things, do this week. Plenty of things to choose from. That is WDIO News at 10. Thanks for being with us all this week. Have a great weekend.